So we're here for the retake project uh, in the studio of Hugh Jones in Ross Collin from the National Museum. Hugh, did you choose right. and, and why, yeah. why did you choose it? I chose Monet's Ruin Cathedral. Um, there's one of the series, there's a series of 30, there's one of them at the um, National Museum. And I was aware of it from quite a long time ago, really. It's seen it there. Uh, it's always struck me as being a very um, amazing painting, really. So I think I was fairly unique amongst the pro project, uh, the people doing the project, as I knew exactly which painting I was going for. So I was able to do a painting straight away. I can't remember on the spots. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it worked uh, really well. This one it? here. Yeah which I did in acrylics, and um, thinking about it now, I think it, it, it did work quite well. And um, One of the things that's really struck me about this painting is, in, in the reproduction it looks so flat, but in actual fact it's, it's made up of layers and layers of paint. Well, the, the other reason I was choosing it was I had a book about it, which, which was useful, which is called Molly's Cathedral, Cathedrals, and it's by Joachim Pizarro, it's uh, Pizarro's son. Oh, yeah. So it's useful, it's got all the plates in, which are fantastic. So we've so got things like that, you know, so you can really sort of um, see the differences there and what he was trying to do. Whole, um, whole series again, you know. So these, I'd, I'd say, can that trip down to Cardiff? Uh, before we went together and I did these because I'd gone down without anything so I bought some coloured pencils and went back yeah. there and that was sort of um, playful as well wasn't it? I like these, yeah. yeah. Mm. Very yes. energetic. Yeah, yeah. So, so just on black paper. So again I thought I could see sort of a darkness behind everything and then these really light colours on top so I suppose that's where that's coming from. And that was done on the spots as well. Maybe with a bit of um, chalk, pastel, yeah, of water or something. Yeah. Um, these were from those first ones that I was, I was printing. Yeah. I think that that's where I've just blotted them and they come off like that. And really, he was attempting something very difficult, almost impossible, really, to, to say this is this time of day. And starting a canvas, and then when the light changed a bit, going to another one, and then another one. And then the next day, maybe going back at the same time, and, you know, doing that same, same one. And that's how I think they built up. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and I think he worked on them after when he took them back to the studio. So it was all about an idea in his head as much as anything. Sure. And I think that, I find that interesting. You know, that's, um, I, I've done lots of painting outside and we do try and capture something. But I often find I need to take it back then and then develop whatever I hope to have captured. So yeah. well. and, um, then when I came back, I had this idea, I'll do 30 small paintings based on the cathedral. I thought, you know, I'm not going to be able to get all these different types of uh, times of day, but I can just play about with paints and experiments and be free with them, really, was, was the idea. So some of them I've used um, sort of monoprint ideas with them. Um, some of them are quite obviously monoprinted onto, aren't they? Um, mm -hmm. And they've got the funny shapes and things, uh, those sort of stencils. But also I was applying the, pa the paints by, by monoprinting in the hope that that would sort of create a sort of encrusted sort of paint coming up off the surface. Um, I think this is the first time since college where I've been able to just play a bit, because usually you're painting and thinking of it as it's not it's not play it's work <laughs> yeah. it's more you know this is what I do but really 
a sense of play in it is, is a good idea. You know, and I do sometimes try and keep that going. Yeah. So that's what those are. Um, I chose to, to do the, a, a similar series about Welsh chapels, which I, I just see as sort of um, they're in every village or every town around here, and, and they are architecture which are supposed to be very important, or so they are important, mm -hmm. they're symbolic. Um, they have meaning um, and they're disappearing in a way as well so some sort mm. of um, feeling of wanting to record them um, they're quite interesting because they seem to be made up of um, mainly sorts of classical type bits and pieces don't they that um, have just been uh, almost as if there was a Catalog. Well, yeah. You could take that bit of classical column from there and have a bit of something else from here, a round window and that kind of thing, or maybe a curved window. And so they have sort of interesting facades about them. And, but since then, I've done this series with the Tabernacle, which is the um, large chapel in Holyhead. And, um, I chose that as a sort of a possible, almost like a substitute for the um, Ruin Cathedral, so that was a bit far away. <laughs> yeah. But also... Your own version. Well, it's yeah. it, superficially it's had these three three large arched um, doors at the bottom. It's had a window, it's a, it's a half circle rather than a circular window, and then it had these towers at the top. And it had a bit of um, architectural detail in it, with the sort of um, classical things on the towers, and then these things around the windows, and the, this, this row of arches underneath. So I thought there's enough there to be of interest at the facades. But I always thought they were interesting, you know, I thought they were all photos, but yeah. they really are interesting places, and um, something about them. But they are going to disappear now in the next 20 years or so, I think. And as, as working places, you know, they, they're just not carrying on as they were. Yeah. Almost never, I've probably never done the whole thing. So perhaps it's come from seeing these cathedral things the way he's not showing the whole whole cathedral. It's kind okay. of cutting off the tower, isn't yeah. he? He's, he's taking little parts of it. And there's a picture here that's that's the whole thing and he's right. always sort of focusing in on the parts here and I suppose that's why I've done that and just taken little bits of, of these um, chapel fronts. There's some, some descriptions in these but it's been very poetic and perhaps to do with music as well in some ways you know that, uh -huh. um, he's choosing colours that aren't actually there. It, it, it's supposed to be just a grey grey stone building you know Mm -hmm. And up to the lights, he's, he's painting the lights, but he's painting, he's, he's interested in the, the envelope, he calls it the, the atmosphere around it, mm -hmm. or between him and the building. And so all these ideas, sure. I think, are, you know, hopefully coming into this as well, in some way, and, yeah. and not having to stick to what's actually the colour there, you know. Yeah. And, um, and he says, um, they're questioning why, why he use the um, cathedral really as, as a subject matter and for him the motif for me is nothing but an insignificant matter what i want to reproduce is what what is there between the motif and myself and i think that's the case with some of my work that i've, I've often done pictures of houses and cottages and, and so on and often they're, they're white buildings and it's the lights on them that's yeah. interesting and the way that the light casts shadows. So, you know, people will ask, well, well what's, what is that building to you? And it's nothing really to me. It's, it's just an excuse to paint. And, yeah. But on, on the other hand, it's it's not quite true that it's nothing either. And if it's the, the chapels, they are something. Yeah, of course. Cool. As well, but I don't, I don't know if the painting can. Yeah. Carry all that. But I, I do you, generally use oil, yeah. but I have recently used quite a lot of acrylic. Not, 
not so much for finished work, but for sketching outside and that kind of right. thing. It's, it's very useful. Um, but I, I think oil generally, I think, has a bit more depth to it. But I think some of the work and some of the frustration, I think I pick it up from some of the things Monet said as well, is that you're excited when you're doing something. And then the next day, I think, well, it's sort of um, sunk in a bit, you know. It's a, yeah. You can do it, you know. And especially, I think, when you're working with these sorts of complementaries and you're trying to get the things to work together. And, mm -hmm. You know, if I put my glasses on and I look closely, I can see that there is a lot of texture in some of them as well. You know, there's a build up of all yes. the texture there. Very much so. I mean, this is the piece, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's in this mm -hmm. one as well there. Um, there's a certain, there's, there's sort of an almost primitive feel to some of them, you know, if I haven't, I haven't drawn, into, well, I haven't drawn them at all really, I, I've just gone straight into painting with them. It was also, with these, I put them on a board, stretched them on a board, mm -hmm. and it's easier to really work on them then, without, you know, without the canvas giving and so on. So that's why it's so, a long thing that's um, it's just very, very, um, wet paint, you know, that he, he was using um, a lot of medium with it. Mm. And that brush strokes then show through on, on, on the paint, and you can build up a sort of impasto. And these now I've sort of soaked them overnight with the turps on them and drained the turps out, which leaves you with a very wet sort of paint. Right. Yeah, so yeah. if you can see up here, um, yeah. it's really sort of um, it's sort of hard to work with, but you can work at it and sort of manipulate it and, and change the form a bit as as you can paint in the way, you know. And blue and pink. This, this, these are the colours in the card of painting here. Yeah. There's, a, there's also a, a dark as well, isn't it? You know, I recently I started using black. I don't know if it's an impressionist colour at all, but I thought you needed a really strong dark in them as well. You know. I, I suppose I, what I'd really like to do is to make it. You see, that is almost an abstract thing going on, isn't it? And I'd quite like to go a step further, and so it becomes almost unrecognisable. But I don't know if I can do that. I don't care where they go really. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad that someone likes them and you know, yes. does care about them, but it's, it's just good to move them on really. It's good to move on. Yeah. And if I see them in years to come, it's nice. Yeah. I, I have a house not too far from here where they've got loads of them. And it's nice to go back and see them. Right. Now. What do you like about working in North Wales? I don't like working anywhere else. Not, not really to the extent as I do. I, I came back from London in um, 1999. I, I, I really wasn't painting there. I was trying to, but I wasn't doing much. And that's when I came back to the theatre, I was able to paint. So I think it's to do with a sense of place mm. and um, needing to be here, here really. And the same if I go on holiday or something, I take a sketchbook and I do something, but there's no urgency or real need to, so I don't. Mm. So I think that there must be something here that uh, is important to me really. I think there's something about the landscape here that's very, very sort of um, basic and earthy and, mm. and there's man-made parts of it as well, which I think are very interesting as well. You know, a fleeting moment, uh, uh, you know, the paintings or the, or the, uh, the subjects that you choose, which are often landscape, but also, uh, as you say, uh, humans' intervention in it, like houses or buildings. Yeah, it's yeah. a good question, and I think it is yeah, part of what I do. So mm. I, and, and the chapels are definitely part of that. It's right. a bit of guilt, because I don't go to chapels, mm. and I've brought up to go. It's sort of an illness that my parents have been very, you know, that's what they did. And, you know, they, they wanted us to carry it on, but they haven't. 
it is quite exciting. Really. Yeah. Um, it's, it's come from some of the things I've been doing, and it's very direct in pages that I come back in the studio, but generally it's all done. And the excitement of the moment, it's been a couple of hours maybe. Really? Yeah. Gosh, it doesn't, it it doesn't look that quick. Work so quickly. Yeah. yeah, I think I would, would have done a bit some of the foreground sound as well, mm -hmm. back here on the sea. But, mm -hmm. yeah. but I think the project somehow has confirmed that it's a good idea to be outside. I think before I would have done a, a sketch of it in pencil, like I said, and then started the painting back in here. I think there's something really good about being on the spot and having to work hard quickly using the skills that have built up I think all the time now to, to, um, to capture something quickly. Great, well yeah. thank you Hugh very much for letting us into thank your you. studio. Thank you. It's been interesting. It, it's been interesting at this stage to, to think about the project a bit, you know. Yeah. Because obviously I am thinking about it, but it, it gives you more focus again, you know, to, to think um, where have I got to with it, yeah. Yeah, sure.